If one of your stock picks is uh, Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway, I have to believe you're a subscriber of the buy and hold, don't overtrade, go for the long run, long run school of thought. Absolutely, Tyler. We're big believers that time in the market is way more important than timing the market. In fact, timing the market is a fool's game. And while this is uncomfortable to ride through, at the end of the day, we're confident that two to three years out from now, this will look like a great time to have bought and, and just stick with the strategy of staying fully invested all the time. And remember, as hard as this year has been or seemed, uh, the levels in the indexes are probably back to where you were in, let's say, 2019, 2020. I don't know the exact number, but, but remember that you're probably, if you're a long-term investor, still way ahead of where you were. You have a couple of other names. Uh, we'll, we'll get to Berkshire in just a little bit. A couple of other names uh, that we don't typically hear about uh, on CNBC, and the first one is Viva. What do they do? Yeah. And it's not the paper towel. Uh, what do they do, <laughs> and why do you like them? Yeah, Viva is an interesting company. It's a technology play. It really, a bulk of what it does is operates a CRM solution, sort of sits on top of the Salesforce platform, and it's vertically focused on the healthcare industry. And so they've really kind of cornered the market. They've built out the CRM tool specifically for the healthcare industry, and they've garnered a substantial amount of share there. Uh, the stock is like a lot of high PE stocks has come down a fair amount, and it looks very attractive, maybe not so much in an absolute sense, trading at about 44 times. But relative to where it's traded historically, it looks quite inexpensive at the moment. And so we like that one a lot. We think there's lots of opportunity for them to continue to expand in the healthcare vertical and do some more things in the R&D side of healthcare. And there's lots of potential for continued growth there. David's Contessa, where are the <laughs> downside risks to an investment in Viva? Well, I think like with anything that's in the tech space today, if the, if, if the 10 year treasury security continues to increase in yield, there's gonna be pressure on price to earnings multiples. And I think that's probably you know something that we'll see. Ultimately, time will tell. The Fed obviously spooked folks on Friday, but the, the longer dated Treasury securities have kind of been they're very volatile. But you know I think they've pinned a little bit around that three percent range. So that that would be one of the key risks. I think fundamentally they they're really kind of firing on all cylinders at the moment, um, and so it's really about valuation and kind of where does that settle out. Let's turn to uh, Berkshire Hathaway. I, I admire uh, Warren Buffett in many, many ways, not least of, of which is he is a long-term investor, a long-term investor at the age of 88. If you're that optimistic, you're, you're a good guy. Let's talk about their businesses, though. A lot of them you would have to put in the cyclical category, uh, transportation, power, uh, manufacturing, housing. Um, how might a slowdown in the economy affect this company and this stock? Well, I would argue, Tyler, that the stock is sort of discounting a challenging economic environment already. You know, we think the stock's got some of the parts of value for the company is in the high 300s, maybe as much as $400 a share. So there's about 30% upside if it just got to what we think the, the value of the underlying businesses are. And obviously, as you pointed out, Warren's have been a great investor for a long time. The businesses that he owns, even though they are cyclical, will likely grow over time. And so that NAV, if you will, the sum of the parts valuation is going to continue to grow over time. So not only do you have the opportunity to kind of close the valuation gap, but we think ultimately the businesses will grow in value over time as well. So there's a couple of levers there that makes us really excited about Berkshire Hathaway at this point in time. You also like an investment in a company that operates in the industrial gas complex, Lind. I'm curious how you see this fitting in in spite of the, the risks that we're seeing with Europe, with China, with Russia, and, and the uncertainty picture there, as well as rampant inflation, Dave. Yeah, so Lind is a really neat company. It's a pretty consistent grower, and it has a strong ability to pass through cost increase that it has on its raw material side to the end customer. Fortunately for them, for many of their customers, the amount they're spending on Lynn's product, if you will, gases, natural industrial gases, is relatively small in the, in the context of the overall business for many of their clients. So they have an uncanny ability to pass through price increases, which ultimately in this kind of environment is very, very important, particularly given the fact that the input for a lot of their gases is natural gas and other chemicals. And so that's a critical element of it. In the meantime, the industry is very, very consolidated at this point. And Lind, as a result of their acquisition of Praxair a few years back, is one of the top providers of industrial gases across the planet. So they've got 
all kinds of end markets, customers all around the globe. And so, yes, certainly things in Europe don't look super compelling right now, but they have a pretty substantial domestic play as well. And again, because they have the ability to pass through costs, they've historically, at least, and we're confident in the future, that they'll be able to continue to chug away a nice mm -hmm. low double digit earnings growth. And, and that's the kind of companies we like to see and own uh, because they're compounders. And that's what drives value over time.